Welcome to CoreLogic's update on housing market conditions from March 2018. This month we're reviewing the housing market conditions up to the end of February with some focus on the easing rate of decline in dwelling values and which segments of the marketplace have been more resilient to falls. Nationally, dwelling values recorded their fifth consecutive month-on-month -month decline in February, taking the value of housing 0.8% lower since the market peaked back in September last year. Most of the capital cities recorded some slippage in dwelling values over the month. However, the largest falls continue to be in Darwin, where values were down almost 1%, and Sydney, where dwelling values fell by 0.6%. Overall, capital city dwelling values were down 0.3% over the month. Importantly, the rate of decline has eased up over the second half of February, with the end of month results showing a more moderate fall in capital city dwelling values relative to the previous months. It's still too early to suggest that the decline trend is bottoming out. However, it does appear that credit policies are starting to loosen up as banks have overachieved their macro potential benchmarks around investment credit growth and interest only lending. Outside of the capitals, regional markets have also lost some momentum, but values are still rising and they're now broadly outperforming their capital city counterparts. The combined regional areas of Australia, which includes any dwelling outside of the capital city regions, saw dwelling values rise by 0.4% over the month to be 0.9% higher over the rolling quarter and 2.8% higher over the past 12 months. Digging below the surface of our headline indices provides more perspective on the changing housing market conditions. Segmenting the marketplace by broad value segments shows that more affordable properties are generally holding their value much better than higher value properties. Across the combined capital cities, value falls were confined to the top five decile ranges, with the largest falls recorded across the most expensive 10% of the market. Dwelling values continue to trend slightly higher over the past three months across the lower value properties. This trend is exemplified in Sydney and Melbourne, where peak to current value falls have been substantially higher across the premium end of the market. The better performance across the lower value properties is likely due to both affordability constraints as well as substantially higher levels of first home buyer activity across Sydney and Melbourne. The run-up in dwelling values prior to the market peaking last year saw a stronger rate of capital gains across higher value properties which has pushed prices out of reach of many prospective buyers. Probably more important though is the surge of first home buyers across New South Wales and Victoria where stamp duty concessions became live in July of last year. First home buyer numbers across New South Wales jumped 81% higher over the second half of last year compared to the first half and in Victoria first home buyers were 47% higher over the same time frame with values either holding firm or even pushing higher at the more affordable end of the market, it's likely that any savings from stamp duty concessions have already been lost in higher home values. There's also some divergence emerging between the performances of houses relative to units. The past 12 months has seen capital city unit values appreciate at more than double the pace of house values. 1.5% for houses compared with an annual growth rate of 3.6% for units. This trend of overperformance across the unit sector comes after detached housing substantially outperformed the unit sector during the growth phase, with house values rising 52% over the growth phase, while unit values were 35% higher over the same time frame. The stronger performance from the unit sector comes despite an unprecedented surge in new unit construction, which has caused some concern around oversupply in some inner city markets. While buyers should probably still use some caution around investment grade high rise unit markets, it seems that strong population growth and affordability constraints in the detached housing sector are supporting prices across the unit market, at least at a macro level. Sydney's housing market moved through its seventh month of decline in February with house values down 0.8% over the month while unit values held firm. The latest fall takes the cumulative decline to 4.8% for houses while unit values are 1.6% below their recent peak. Although dwelling values are still falling, the rate of decline eased up a bit in February, improving from a 0.9% drop in December and January to a decline of 0.6% in February. The weaker housing market conditions are primarily due to tighter credit regulations as well as housing affordability constraints. However, a rush of first home buyer activity as well as ongoing strong population growth, low unemployment and solid jobs growth are helping to support a floor under housing prices. To date, the pullback in dwelling values has been quite moderate, especially in light of how strong value growth has been prior to markets like Sydney and Melbourne moving through their peaks late last year. 
there are a number of factors which are likely to influence the direction of the marketplace over the coming months, including migration trends, labor market conditions, credit policies, and mortgage rates. Migration rates from overseas have remained high. However, there have been some shifts in the interstate flows of Australian residents. Increasingly, residents of New South Wales are moving to other states and in Queensland and Victoria recording the highest net interstate migration flows. The shift in interstate migration is easing demand for housing in markets such as Sydney, while housing demand from interstate migration is picking up into Queensland, in particular the southeast Queensland regions. Focusing on the labour market, unemployment rates are generally trending lower, labour force participation rates are trending higher, and jobs growth has become more broader based. Stronger labour market conditions, particularly in the regions where the cost of housing is more affordable, will support housing demand and should eventually help to push wages growth off a near record low. From a borrowing perspective, first home buyers have surged back into the New South Wales and Victorian housing markets, boosted by stamp duty concessions that took effect on July 1st. Additionally, less competition from the investment sector has likely supported a rise in first home buyers buying in the market. Importantly, there are early signs that the stimulatory impacts of stamp duty concessions in New South Wales and Victoria may be starting to wane as higher demand from first home buyers has supported stronger market conditions across the lower price points, alleviating the benefits of stamp duty concessions. Additionally, Australian lenders generally remain well below APRA's macro potential growth ceiling and benchmarks, with investment related credit growth tracking well below 10% and interest only mortgage originations substantially less than 30% lenders may be able to loosen their lending policies for investment purposes. In terms of interest rates, the ASX cash rate futures is currently showing financial markets aren't expecting a cash rate hike until at least May 2019. Although higher interest rates are likely to be some way off, the repeated commentary from the Reserve Bank is around the higher probability of an interest rate hike rather than a cut. Overall, the housing markets continue to see soft conditions resulting in some slippage of housing values. However, the rate of decline has flattened out in February. The next couple of months should provide a much clearer picture as to whether the falls are set to continue or if the market is in fact stabilizing. Considering the tighter credit environment, the eventual prospect of higher interest rates and ongoing housing affordability constraints in the largest capitals, we expect housing market conditions will remain sedate relative to previous years. The reversal in capital gains has been mild to date, a clear sign that macroprudential measures have removed the heat from the market in a very controlled manner. As the market continues to evolve, make sure you stay up to date with the latest housing market research at www.corelogic.com.au.